Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're playing a bit of Space Engineers and in front of my character here I have a ship that I've been designing for quite a few days now and I thought I would go through what I did to determine how many thrusters I need for this thing. So I'll just open this back up, move our character around, go back into first person mode. So the ship at the moment has seven large hydrogen thrusters underneath and so I guess what we'll do first is we will work out how much thrust these particular thrusters are going to provide to us so we keep in mind we have seven of these so if we go back into our or if we go into our control panel and we look at one of these large hydrogen thrusters now each one of these large hydrogen thrusters give us 7.2 mega newtons of thrust. So if we times that by 7, it works out to be 50.4 mega newtons of thrust in the upwards direction. Now why is this useful to us? Well from that number we can calculate, um, we can also calculate the amount of mega newtons that gravity is causing against this ship. Um, obviously I'm talking in mega newtons because this ship is really heavy as it's made of armor blocks but your particular ship might only be killer newtons or you know something like that so keep that in mind now if we look at the ship uh, on the right hand side here underneath our POY we can see that the weight of this ship is 4,584,913 so really it's 4.6 megatons uh, yeah megatons so all we need to do is we need to times 4.6 by the gravity of the planet that we're currently on obviously this is earth so the planetary gravity of earth is 9.8 meters per second squared so we do 9.8 times uh, 4.6 we'll just round it up and we come to about 45.08 mega newtons. Now remember before we said that these large hydrogen thrusters underneath would provide us with 50 mega newtons of thrust. And the ship and its weight is pulling us down at 45.08 mega newtons. So we have 5 mega newtons of additional thrust. So that means that this ship will indeed float and it will definitely get into the atmosphere. But the problem is that if any of these thrusters get damaged, that's it. We no longer have enough thrust to keep this ship in the air. Secondly, we haven't finished the rest of this ship. So we haven't added a bridge, we haven't added a back end to this ship nothing's really complete so the weight of this particular ship is likely to increase quite significantly so in order to get around that what do we do well we just add more thrusters right well yes and no so the problem with these thrusters is that they take up a lot of room see these thrusters are three by three by three which means that Obviously these are three blocks tall, three blocks wide, and three blocks long. So as you can see it's taking up quite a bit of room in our ship. Now one thing that I discovered, and this, this is quite interesting, right? So let us compare the large thruster with one of these small thrusters. So let's go into the control panel. any random thruster and you can see this particular thruster puts out 1.1 mega newtons so if the large thrusters are 3 by 3 by 3 then we can fit nine of these thrusters in where one of the large thrusters would be so that means that the large thruster puts out 7.2 mega newtons and these small thrusters in the same position will push out 9.9 mega newtons. So I'll just demonstrate that here. Uh, 
fly a ship that's parked on the ground. It's not going to get us very far. So now, I have deliberately left a 3x3x3 three by three by three space here. So we go 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you can see with these thrusters here, we have consumed less space than these vertically and these thrusters are also worth 9.9 .9 meganewtons of thrust whereas this one thruster here is only worth 7.2 so we can put we can fill this entire area with small thrusters and we will have more thrust than if we were to fill this entire area with the large thrusters obviously now the other added benefit to doing this is that yes we have more room down the bottom but also we have more room up the top here so actually I probably wouldn't put the thrusters there or more put them there um, and we have to put our conveyor there we can move the tank down one block and then that gives us another block up here that we can play with so that's nice so we have more thrusts um, we're saving room yeah, so I'm not sure what the actual downside to this is. I'm sure there is one, but I haven't figured out what that is yet. Maybe it is fuel consumption. Maybe it's weight. Maybe it's the amount of components you use to build something. Um, but yeah, e either way, doing it this way gives you a lot more thrust for the same area. That's also worth worth noting that these particular thrusters being, you know, the way that they are, if one of these thrusters gets taken out, we only lose 1.1 meganewtons of thrust. If one of these gets taken out, we lose 7.2 meganewtons of thrust. So these engines are a lot more expendable for us. And with what I've designed this ship for, um, primarily being a really tough nut to crack, I don't want my thrusters getting damaged and then I'm not able to land on the planet anymore, you know, because then I'll need to leave my ship in space and I've got to go up there and repair it and new thrusters on it and that sort of jazz. And then also it's worth noting that this ship, it has nothing else on it, so once we start adding more components, we might not have enough room for those large thrusters. Now, one other thing that you might not consider when you're designing your ship is what planets you're going to land on. Now, if you're going to land on Mars, Europa, I believe there is Titan, um, no problems, because those particular planets actually have less gravity than Earth. However, if you're going to log on, uh, sorry, log on, if you're going to land on the alien planet, you need to also consider the fact that the alien planet is bigger than Earth and has more gravity. So, the gravity of the alien planet is 1.1 times that of Earth. So all we need to do, we don't need to work out the meters per second squared of that particular planet. All we need to do is take our 45 mega newtons that we calculated before, and we times that by 1.1. I'm terrible at maths, so I'm going to use a calculator for this. So that works out to be 49.5 mega newtons. Now keep in mind that our large thrusters right now, the seven of them, are putting out 50.4 mega newtons, I believe it was, of thrust. And if if we try and land this ship on the alien planet just as it is with nothing else on it, then we're going to get pulled down at a rate of 49.5 mega newtons. So this thing is going to be teetering on the edge of actually being able to float in the air. And I don't think it would have enough thrust to actually slow down during uh, re-entry. Or well, entry, because we have never actually left the planet in the first place. So yeah, there is that to consider as well. So I should point out that this particular ship is actually first um, iterations of this ship that I've done. Um, I have actually completed it and I've replaced all these small thrusters with a lot more 
sorry, I have replaced all these large thrusters with smaller thrusters. And I think I'll go over my ship in the next video. But basically I'll give you a quick tour of the ship anyway. So as you can see this is in creative mode and I've got uh, I believe we have six hydrogen tanks here. But in my final design I'm going to go with eight um, large hydrogen tanks. Um, and as you can see I've got these large thrusters held up by these conveyors. have ourselves a large cargo container, we've got a large reactor. Now the large reactor, I don't actually have any uranium in my survival save at the moment so I can't actually run this. Um, but I put this purely here so that I can get the ship off the ground, do some flight tests, just make sure everything's hunky dory um, and the, the thing can actually fly. Um, what I worked out was that these thrusters on the back are actually quite adequate however these thrusters on the side are a little bit lacking so I'm probably going to add another three thrusters on this side and maybe another one thruster here uh, because this particular area is going to be extended out as well so but I'll show you that in the next video and um, also I redesigned the bridge um, and you can see these guns they are very close together. Now, during my testing, this didn't really work out too well for me. Um, because I found this gun, while trying to get the target, was shooting this one and vice versa. and They were all damaging each other just trying to get their fire onto target. So, I've actually had to reduce the amount of guns on here and spread them out a bit across the hull. Um, but. We definitely need this ship to be well armed, well at least I want it to be well armed. So yeah, anyway I hope that was useful for you guys and I hope it helps you design your ships a little bit better, um, utilise that space a little bit better, fit a bit more good stuff into your ship rather than worrying about thrusters and fuel tanks and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, give us a like if uh, this video was helpful for you. Uh, definitely consider subscribing to the channel as I plan to make a lot more Space Engineers videos. And in the next video I'm going to be going over this particular ship, but finished. Well, more or less finished. <coughs> <coughs> Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you in the next one.